13, 1 through 8, and Matthew 9, 9 through 13. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham read to the, ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to repair it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had had prepared, and it set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. Now Matthew 9, 9 through 13. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax collection station, and he said to him, Follow me, and he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came up and were sitting with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God is good all the time. Hey Amen. Why don't you turn around and simply say, hey, I know you. Come on, let's do that. Hey, I know you guys. Hey, I know you. I know you. I know you. Amen, amen. God knows you. God knows who you are. God even numbers your hairs. If you are bold, it's okay. God knows your heart, okay? All right? God loves you just the way you are, and God calls each one of us to be here as a church. We are very glad. We are very happy. We are so blessed. We are very thankful to be here in this place. Can we all pray together? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you once again for reminding each one of us we are your people. Thank you once again for uh, calling each one of us. You are mine and you belong to us and you belong to me and you are under the grace of God. You are under the love of Christ. Thank you once again for giving us great opportunity to experience your unconditional love, your unending grace, your unstoppable grace in our journey. Thank you once again for, uh, for who you are and for who we are in this place. God, we love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen. Yesterday, I came back from the uh, annual conference uh, a lot of people came, came in and asked me a question. Uh, your church is great, right? So teach me how to do. How, teach me how you how, how you do do that. How how you you did that? Uh, we would like to have you as a guest speaker, and then we want to learn how you did. I, I simply said, oh, no, I didn't do anything. I just walk with our congregation. The church is great, and the people in the church are great as well. So um, I didn't say too much, and then, but uh, thanks be to God. Uh, uh, for a couple of years since I was appointed as a pastor here, uh, it's a, such a great joy to see new people, young uh, people, and all the kiddos in our church. Uh, uh, ministry that we do together in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we are very grateful. In a couple of years, uh, I think we receive a lot of new people. We reach out a lot of people. We welcome a lot of new people. And we walk together, no matter who they are. 
will walk together in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Church has been a church. Church has been a church with love and grace and mercy and genuine compassion here at this place. So that is the reason why a church is rebuilding legacy in our community. Church is making a big difference in the people's lives as well. So thanks be to God is not what I have done. It's what we have done together in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I am so proud of you. Thank you once again for listening. And thank you so much for trusting me. And thank you so much for uh, giving me a wonderful job as your pastor. From the bottom of my heart, I would like to say thank you. Thank you so much for your love and trust and support. As I lead wonderful congregation in the church, I am eternally blessed. I am also deeply thankful for each one of you. I am so glad and blessed to be here as your pastor. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. Woohoo! Can we clap together? Woohoo! Hallelujah! Woo! Amen, amen. Let's dive into the Word of God together and listen to what God is speaking to our hearts and to the church and the, to, to the community uh, we live today. As we carefully take a look at the life and ministry and teaching of Jesus Christ, we can clearly see that Jesus has an authentic and real and genuine and passionate and welcoming lifestyle. His character is full of biblical hospitality. His lifestyle can show us that Jesus does not have any theology. His theology is love. His uh, ministry strategy in his life is love God and love others. He has a clear and real and passionate and genuine lifestyle of the hospitality. Whoever he encounters in his ministry, wherever he goes and whatever he does, he has a gift. He has a gift of hospitality based on the unconditional love of God, based on the heart of the gospel. I really pray that as you listen to the word of God today, I really pray the spirit of God will touch your heart and open your heart to experience the unconditional love of God. And then I really pray that the spirit of God will take our congregation to the heart of the gospel so that we can become the hands and feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. We radically do an action with hospitality. Also, as we see the ministry in the life and, 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 and the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has a very weird, he has a very unique, he has a very strange nickname. Okay? What's his nickname? A friend of sinners. Right? Wherever he goes and he pays careful attention and loving attention and full and, and merciful attention to the sinners. Teachers, masters, why are you hanging out with a bunch of, you know, they are, they are absolutely unwelcome. They, they, they are lost and broken, vulnerable, and they're mentally not right. They are weird and mean and angry. Why are you hanging out with them? Stay in and hang out with a bunch of rich people and intellectual people. No, 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 no. I'm here for sinners just like you, just like me. Jesus came to the earth to love you just the way you are. To show his mercy and grace no matter what. So uh, Jesus loves hanging out with sinners, listening to their stories and sharing the love of God and reminding them they are children of God and they are enough and they matter to God. That's what the ministry Jesus did 2,000 years ago. 
In Matthew chapter 9, you can see Jesus calling Matthew the tax collector to be his disciple. A lot of people are pointing out and oh my Matthew tax collector, he is collecting all the money and he is saving all the money for himself. But now Jesus is hanging out with tax collector. And we learn that Jesus sit at the table with many tax collectors and sinners. The parishes, you know, the, all the teachers of the Lord, they complain and, and they, they, they point out Jesus. Why did you do that? You're calling yourself the king of the Jews. Why are you hanging out with a bunch of weird, lost, broken, run up of people? Jesus tells them, He has not come to call the righteous, but sinners just like us, broken just like us, lost and vulnerable and poor and sick just like us. Jesus wants to see people to repent their sins, return to the heart of the gospel. In Luke chapter 15, you can find Jesus explaining about the parable of the lost sheep and then lost coins and lost son as well. These three parables actually demonstrate how God does seek our lost. Broken, vulnerable, poor, and sick, and how pleased God is when sinners repent their sins and come back to the Lord. Jesus is truly a friend of sinners. Because he came to love sinners. He invited sinners. He welcomed sinners. He led sinners to the kingdom of God. I want to be a friend of sinners. Just like Jesus. I want to do the same things. Just like a friend of sinners. You can call me from now. and Don't call me Pastor Michael. Just call me a, a friend of sinners. Eating with sinners. Inviting sinners, welcoming and accepting and receiving sinners, teaching and walking with sinners just like Jesus. You know why I want to do that? You ready for this? I have been loved. I have been accepted. I have been forgiven. I have been taught. I have been served. I have been led by Jesus Christ while I was yeah, I, I was sinner. Because you have been loved and you have been forgiven, you have been invited, you have been welcomed, and you have been served and led by our Lord Jesus Christ while you were a sinner as well. I want to welcome, I want to invite. I want to show God's radical hospitality to everybody. I want to love everybody I encounter in my journey. Someday God will ask me a question. You love them, but you didn't love them. God will ask me a question. How come you only love you love? How come you didn't invite and welcome and love the people you disliked? I want to sit down with sinners on the table. I want to make a meal for them. I want to pray. I want to pay you know, full attention to people. I want to listen to their story. I want to pray for them. And I, will, I want to encourage them. I want to fill their heart with the hope of gospel. No matter what other people say about me. Oh my, look at the Asian pastor. His nickname is a friend of sinners. Yes, I'm a friend of sinners. I don't pay attention to what other people say about me. When I go to the kingdom of God, and God will give me a big hug. You did welcome people. You did invite people. You did love people in your journey. Here is a reward. Here is a crown. Of the heaven. I'm looking for the future when I see Jesus face to face. God will say, Well done, faithful and genuine, authentic 
and passionate and merciful servant of God. You did your good. And now, have a banquet. Have, a, have Chinese with me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know Jesus' nationality. You know, probably, oh yeah, he's, uh, he's Korean. He's, he's, he's American. I don't know. He's, uh, uh, all of a sudden, Jesus will, boom, will say, Jesus will say, buenos dias. Okay? I, I don't know what to say. Don't take it very seriously, okay? In Romans chapter 12, verse 9 through 13. Uh, do not write a letter to the bishop, okay? All right, okay? In Romans chapter 12, verse 9 through 13, come alive in a very, very practical way. This is what Paul asked the believers to do uh, uh, just the way Jesus did. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor and passion. Serving the Lord, be joyful in hope and patient in affliction. Faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. We do believe the Bible, and the Bible is requiring and asking and, and, and challenging each one of us practice hospitality. But as I was preparing my message, I saw myself. Sometimes I was very selfish. I am very self-centered. I only think about all the things I have. But the Spirit of God is asking me to the place where I can open my eyes, see the people who are around me. Now all the blessings that I have is not for myself. It's not for my family. It's also for brothers and sisters who are going through a very difficult time. I'm going to put Jesus' love into spiritual and practical ways for people around me. Even sinners around me. By what I do, putting Jesus' love into radical hospitality, people and even sinners will see who I am and what I believe in and who is inside of me. Here's a, here's a quote. The five practice of a fruitful congregation written by my former bishop, Robert Snaes. A Christian hospitality is an active desire to invite welcome and receive and care for those who are strange, not only strangers, so that they find a spiritual home, discover for themselves the unending richness of life in Christ. Practicing radical hospitality means we offer the absolute utmost of ourselves, our creativity, our ability to offer the gracious invitation and welcome of Christ to others. We pray, we plan, we work to invite others, help them feel welcome, to support them in their spiritual journey. Here's a quote. By intention, hospitality, practice the gracious love of Christ, respect the dignity of others, and expresses God's invitation to others, not our own. Jesus, a friend of sinners, heard and learned about his faith father, Abraham. When Jesus was young, he learned how, how Abraham uh, showed hospitality to the angel of God, to the strangers. In the book of Genesis chapter 18, Abraham welcomed strangers. And then Abraham prepared a meal for them and he showed them a great hospitality. He served the meal, he listened to their story, he, their honors, he honors, he respect the strangers as well. According to the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2, do not neglect to show hospitality. For by doing this, some have welcomed angels as guests without knowing it. As, as I read a book, the, the call Making Room, written by Christian Bach, says in a book, Hospitality is a central practice of the Christian life. 
is not just one time event, but the lifestyle of believers in Christ. One of my favorite authors, Henry Nowen, uh, let me quote If there is any concept worth restoring to its original depth and, and evocated potential, it is the concept of hospitality. It is one of the richest biblical terms that can deepen and broaden our insight in our relationships to our fellow human beings. Friends, hospitality is the way we experience and we understand the Christian life. Practicing hospitality is a part of who we are. It's the, it's the basic foundation, the biblical foundation of Christianity. It's a part of your life and a part of my life is a Christian witness in our journey. Be Jesus. We're radical, loving, and merciful, compassionate hospitality in your faith journey. Sometimes, we as a human being will love the people we love. Why don't we change our perspective? Even people who are mad, even who are people depressed, even who are people lost, broken, and vulnerable around us in our community. It's time. It's time for us to reach out our hands, pray for them, and show them compassion and mercy and hospitality as well. As you show a radical hospitality, do you know what's going to happen? Are you ready for this? The poor can find hope. Vulnerable can find joy. The lost can find courage. The sinners can find a spiritual home. Today, we as the people of God are deeply challenged not only to cover the Christian hospitality tradition in our journey, but also to welcome the lost, love the vulnerable, lead the poor in our community to the table of love and hope and faith. I really like the United Methodist Church because United Methodist Church, as you can see the table, is an open table. That means Jesus is inviting everybody. Your background, your nationality, your color, your language, doesn't matter. We're all God's children. And we have to listen to what God is speaking to our heart. Come and eat with me. Come and accept a friend of sinners. Come and walk with me. Come and learn and go and show your mercy and compassion and hospitality to the brothers and sisters who are lost and vulnerable in our community. We as followers of Jesus Christ are deeply encouraged to see themselves not as a stranger, but friends with God's loving image show small act of sacrificial love and hospitality to brothers and sisters around us. Let me ask you a question. Amy and Chad, you have two kiddos. What are you going to teach your kiddos? How are you going to teach your kiddos? Wendy and Hoops are there and I here. But how are you going to teach? What are you going to teach? You love the people you love? No. Learn and grow in the love of grace. Love of God. Learn and grow. Teach your kiddos. Teach, teach your next generation how to be hospitable. How to be loving. How to be compassionate. How to be merciful. How to be uh, uh, forgiving to the people around them. Here's your challenge for, the, for this week. Invite someone. You know, invite your neighbor and have a meal with them. Pray for them. Pay them, you know, pay more attention to them. 
pay full attention to them and then show the love of Christ by serving just like Abraham, eating just like Jesus, and, and praying just like Christ, and listening just like Christ. This is how we bless our community. This is how we bless people around us. This is how we can make a big difference. And this is how we transform the community we love and we lead and we belong. Can we all pray together? Let us pray. God, you are the God of welcoming. You are the God of love and mercy and compassion and justice. Sometimes we are very, very self-centered. We only think about ourselves. Sometimes we are selfish and self-centered. We don't have any time to look around who are going through a very, very difficult time. God, teach us how to show radical hospitality to the brothers and sisters in our community. God, we are sinners just like others. God, would you please show us how to do, how to show, and how to love our neighbors. Teach us. Give us your courage and boldness to invite our neighbors, to share the love of Christ, to serve the meal, and listen to their stories. God, be with us as we put our faith into action. God, we love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Why don't you turn around? And I really want you to say so. Okay? Why don't you turn around and, and look at their eyes. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Okay? Okay? You, why don't you say, you are a child of God. Sometimes, go, why don't you, sometimes, I don't like you. Come on, sometimes I don't like you. Sometimes I, I get mad at you. Sometimes I hate you. Because you are very cranky and mean and angry. But here I am. I love you just the way you are. Even you are cranky and angry and mean and mad at me, it's okay. I would like to love you just the way you are. You can give your neighbor a kiss. Come on, do that. Come on. Hug and kiss. This is how we love our neighbors. This is how we transform our community and our work we we'll live today. All right, amen. Am I cranky? Am I grumpy? No, please love me just the way I am. Amen.